It's been raining a lot lately here and it's washed out a lot of my fishing plans. So I thought it would be a good idea to come out here to my favorite small stream that's high at the moment and a bit dirty and talk about how to productively fish rivers and streams in high water. The first thing you've got to know is when to stay home. Sometimes the weather and the river levels are just too bad and just stay home and find another time to fish. Be especially careful of rising rivers. You don't want to get trapped on the wrong side of a rising river or a flash flood and get stuck for overnight. So just be careful of that. Know your weather forecast, know your river and your location. The ideal scenario is a falling river like this one. The stream has been high over the weekend, really dirty and uh, had a lot of rain, but it is starting to drop now. There is a little bit of rain forecast today and that's already falling now. But it's not meant to be significant. This is probably just a passing storm that I saw coming. So I'm not too worried about this stream rising while I'm fishing it. And importantly, there is a safe exit track. It's all on the same side of the river and I don't have the need to cross it if I don't want to. And I can easily cross back. It's very small as well and easily crossable everywhere. To find fishable water like this after a lot of rain, you got to look at the headwaters and tributaries. I drove past the main river this morning and it was horrible. Flooded, brown and completely unfishable. This is a tributary and even in the lower reaches of this tributary it was pretty bad. You couldn't fish it at all. But I came right up to the headwaters. I am maybe six kilometers from the catchment and the river's cleared significantly. Uh, it's still high but it's quite fishable and we're going to put that to the test in, in a little while. I'm going to be fishing and talking through the methods I use to try and fish a river like this in these conditions. Still, you need to keep an eye on the weather. It's not pleasant at the moment. It's cool. Uh, make sure you've got enough layers and you make sure you've got some spare dry clothes in the car and some extra layers to keep with you in your backpack. I am going to be wet wading. It is early spring year. I'm a bit optimistic, but we'll give it a go. I have dry clothes. I can come back to the car anytime if I need to. I also did bring my waders if I uh, decide to chicken out. So with the river being a little bit high and dirty, I probably won't be using the normal methods I would when it is low and clear. I did some tying last night, some extra flies, and uh, something that works really well in these conditions is the good old squirmy worm. It's ideal for dirty high rivers. Got this one with a little bit heavier bead than I would normally fish this. This is a 3.3 mil tungsten bead. I normally would fish like a 2.2 or 2.5 mil tungsten bead here, even if I use a tungsten bead, it might be some only a, a brass bead. Um, that's a really good fly option, which we'll put to the test later. And I also tied some brighter orange beaded nymphs. Plus I have some standard gold bead nymphs as well. Brighter flies like orange beads and worms and things like that just helps the fish see that in the dirty water. And fishing a little bit heavier just means I can get down quicker into the pockets and faster water. A lot of the water up here is pocket water, it's short deep drop offs and with the higher flows you just need to get down into them, especially if the fish aren't on the surface, which they probably won't be today. Even though I don't think the fish will be on the surface today, I am going to be fishing dry dropper most likely, which is what I normally fish here. So what I did is I tied up some high floating foam patterns that should work well in this conditions. They are visible and float high so they can carry a little bit heavier nymph under them and uh, they'll just give me a, a sign uh, if the fish is taking uh, a bit like an indicator but the fish will also eat these if they are close to the surface and see them they will grab these as a terrestrial so uh, i'll give that a go and we'll see what happens with my leader setup i'm just going with a nine foot three x tapered leader and to that i will be using four x tippet to attach my dry for about a foot and then i'll have another foot or a foot and a half to my point fly from the dry fly. I can either use a dropper tag or in this case I'll probably tie it from the bend. And uh, we'll test that rig out and see how that works and change it up if I need to. So let's rig up and, and get to the river. Rightio, I've made my way down to the stream. It's definitely a little bit of color and a lot of extra flow. I've gone with the gold bead nymph to start off with and I'm just going to be targeting shallower inside seams like this not too fast or too deep water and I'm going to start by fishing my feet like that I'm going to have to cast far and uh, I'll just work the water looking for little seams and things that's a good potential spot the fish might be sitting out of the main current 
just in front or behind boulders, little deep holes. It's still quite early and quite cold, so this is not ideal. Hopefully when it warms up a little, it might be better. There's both browns and rainbows in here. Uh, the browns will often sit in that slightly slack water and the rainbows often in a bit faster water. Right, this side in here. Normally I wouldn't get fish in here but it's quite a bit deeper than usual so I might try to get underneath there. But I'm just basically going to work the stream and fish anything that looks likely and especially undercut banks and edges slow inside seams and bits and pieces like that and if i'm not getting anything i might try to go heavier or go with a squirmy worm something that's more bright but it's not that dirty today so i think the gold bead would be would be sufficient the good thing about the slightly dirtier water as well is you can get closer to the fish and like as likely to spook normally I find this stream quite challenging when it's like this high flow the water is still quite cold just swapping just to the GoPro while I get wait for this rain to go away I can already see some blue skies but uh, yeah, there's going to be a few rainstorms possibly today like this. Hopefully not too much. The key is just to try and figure out where the fish might sit. It can be quite hard when it's high and a bit dirty like this. This stream particularly can be quite challenging, but you can also have very successful days on a drop in the river like this. Up out of that backwater there. I should be putting something out of there. Uh, I'm going to go with out of the water and do that, I think. Oh, yep, what a fish. Oh, that's a nice fish. I was just about to change. That's a nice fish. That's a nice brownie by the look of it. Yeah, that's a nice brown. Awesome. Awesome, that's a lovely brown. Oh, that's a lovely brown. Oh, that is a lovely fish. That is awesome. All work came together perfectly. Wow, what a first fish. That is an awesome brownie, wow! Just look at that man, that is cool. Really awesome brown to start off with, what a cool fish. Let's get that one away. That was an awesome brownie, plan came together. I've just worked this maybe 20 or 30 meters of stream, trying all the different pockets and soft areas. And then behind that boulder there, I picked up that first touch, which I think was a fish and a few more drifts through there i was just about to think of changing flies and going deeper and then well i knew there should really be a fish somewhere there that brown took it and yeah got a lovely brown so that's what i'm going to keep doing working those soft edges sort of backwaters uh, tails of pools inside edges just working the shallow bits and the soft bits where uh, the fish will hold out of the main current and they will keep going with that i'm going to stick now with the gold bead <laughs> Air and copper for now, and uh, but I might in the next pull up is a bit deeper, so I might change to something a little bit heavier. We'll see. This is an interesting spot which I've never really fished from this side. Gives me a lot more clearance than on the other side. I'm just gonna fish my way through it. There's really a lot of potential for fish to hold here. Yes, got him. Feels like a good fish. Nice. 
Looks like a decent fish. Nice. What is it? A rainbow? Yeah, it's a nice rainbow. Very cool. Okay. Good fish starting off today. platform here nice two good fish on the new rod new five weight <laughs> nice that's awesome that's another great fish very cool Awesome, what a great fish. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Beautiful rainbow for a small stream. That's just lovely. That's an awesome fish. Let's get that one away. Well, those first two fish are great examples of what can happen when things go right. So uh, yeah, this has been productive water so far. I'm not too far up from the car. Tried one little spot, I didn't get anything there, but uh, I'm gonna skip a lot of the water I would usually fish, just because a lot of it's very pockety and is now quite fast and uh, I don't think a lot of fish will hold in there so I'm gonna be fishing different water than I would usually fish I'm seeking out slightly slower pools and uh, sort of softer water not the fast pockets I would usually fish so and so far that's been working for me so I'll keep at it and make my way up all right so I'm fishing a lot heavier than I would usually fish in summer in here but there we go then a really productive spot is quite fast now and the inside is still looks pretty good yes perfect nice fish ah came off ah into the trees ah well that's my usually productive spot and yep that inside edge did perfectly well and a uh, decent rainbow hook but uh, unfortunately this hook just popped off well, I'm just venturing my way over to a pool that should be really good I don't know whether it gets fished that much it's just a little bit out of the way okay this should hopefully have been worthwhile it's been quite a bit of bush bashing to get here um, good thing is the river is clearing even more as the day wears on I can, in the shallower bits I can actually see quite well already but it looks like the fish are sitting definitely holding deeper I want to get underneath that tree in there oh that's a fish I was just looking where I was walking and there's one nice Feels like a good rainbow. Yeah, some fish. Nice rainbow. A gold bead here in Popper. That's a lovely fish. Oh, nice. Perfectly in the tip of the mouth. That's perfect. Wow, what a nice fish. Reward for going the extra mile and uh, trying to find a spot that is good and accessible. Lovely pool, this. My gold bead here in Copper doing the trick. Nice fish. Beautiful rainbow for this stream. Lovely. Wow. That's very cool. Very happy about that. And uh, yeah, the third fish for the day. Last look there. And let's try and get that one away. Well, that little bush bashing mission was worthwhile in the end. Nice fish that. I uh, it didn't form it, but I nearly took a swim on the way back. But yeah, it was worth that little side trip. So 
keep making our way up and see if we can find some more fish. I'm not going to cross here. Probably should, but get down there and crossing and stuff is a bit of a mission. So I'm just going to fish it off this high bank. There's a bit of a spot at the back to land fish if I hook one. My fly is getting anywhere near down. Oh, yes, little one. <laughs> cool, it's very jumpy. Okay, I'm gonna have to walk my way down with it to land it down there. Hopefully, it doesn't drop off in the meantime. Ooh. Oh, oh, what a fish. I'm trying to need it. It's falling in the river. There we go. <laughs> little one. First little one today, which is interesting. Normally, this is more the size of regularly catch here there we go a little rainbow trout cool and a few nice bits of water here and move it up and hopefully can pull one more out push our feet first A big pool below me, so if I can drift it into the head of that, it's quite handy. Oh, I had to I have hooked on in the bottom of that pool. Exactly, I was drifting it back. I saw the indicator disappear. I thought I'd missed what was going on. It seems to be a decent fish. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I just drifted it back in there. And yeah, got one. Looks like a nice rainbow. And keep it on. I've got really nowhere to go, so I've got to land it here. Over that. This is over there. Hey, really nice fish. Nice fish. Fish for today. Beautiful for this little stream. That's a lovely fish for this stream. Absolutely lovely. Very happy about that. That's an awesome fish. Oh, a quick last look and then, uh, yeah, let's take that one away. Awesome fish. Let's get that one away. Cool. Okay. Well, I bunged the release on that fish, but uh, yeah, I just drifted it back into that pool and i saw my indicator go under i sort of struck and i wasn't sure and then i tried to recast and the fish was on so awesome nice fish so happy about that well this is a great looking piece of water that i really should be fishing from the other side but it's just such hard work to cross today uh, i'm not going to i'm going to figure out what i do with a fish i hook if i hook one And there I hook a fish. And this is a little one which I can just lift out and into my net. Get the net ready. Like that. Hook out. And just drop it out. 
a little fit and a little rainbow trout. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and found the information in it useful, especially for your next trip in high water. So just to recap, make sure you stay safe, be careful of rising rivers, look for a dropping river or a clearing river, and uh, you might be in for some good fishing. Focus on the softer water where the fish can hold edges, soft back eddies and things like that. And uh, you might have to fish a bit heavier and deeper and potentially bite the colors and things like uh, the old squirmy worm. So, so watch this video next. It's a really good video, you'll enjoy that. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.